This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Wendy Griffith. Thousands of Christians, Kurds, and Yazidis fleeing for their lives as Turkish forces blitz northern Syria. How many of our allies against ISIS will perish? And will President Trump change his mind and send U.S. troops back to the region? Chris Mitchell brings us more on the mounting devastation. The Turkish army and its allies pounded Syrian Democratic forces, the SDF, from the air and the ground. The SDF lost more than 10,000 soldiers fighting ISIS. Now they're once again fighting for their lives and homes. The Turkish invasion includes the Free Syrian Army, jihadist troops who fight alongside Turkey, a NATO member. The Turkish invasion runs all the way across the nearly 300-mile northeast Syrian Turkish border, from the town of Derek in the east all the way to Kobani in the west. The White House said Turkey had committed to three things, protect civilians, protect religious minorities, including Christians, and ensure no humanitarian crisis takes place. So far, all three have been violated. The fighting is forcing thousands to run for their lives. This woman asked, why did the Americans flee? Many have nowhere to go except the desert. And some humanitarian aid agencies are warning up to 250,000 residents may flee the fighting. Many civilians have been wounded. This is Morris Amsi, Bishop of the Orthodox Syriacs, visiting the wounded from the Turkish invasion. These are some of the others wounded in the past three days, including this 10-year-old boy. In a rare move, Syriac church bells in northeast Syria rang out for hours to warn local people to stay in their shelters. The church cried out for the indiscriminate Turkish bombing to stop. President Trump was asked if he would support sanctions against Turkey. Let's see what happens. We are going to possibly do something very, very tough with respect to sanctions and other financial things. In the meantime, the fighting goes on. These Christian fighters in the Syrian Democratic Forces visited this church, kissed the Bible, and headed back to the front lines to defend their homeland against the Turkish invasion. In a tweet, President Erdogan said he would like to kiss the foreheads of the heroes of the Mohammedan army. That was Chris Mitchell reporting. Turkish President Erdogan has been called the Sultan of 21st century Turkey. Dale Hurd joins us now with more analysis. Dale. Wendy, Recep Tayyip Erdogan has been given more power than any other democratically elected leader in modern Turkey. And Turkey's new sultan does what he wants. Many believe he would like to revive the old Ottoman Empire. And his erratic behavior has many nations asking if he is a friend or foe. He once wanted to join the European Union, but this week threatened to flood the EU with millions of Syrian refugees if any EU nation dare call his invasion of Syria an invasion. He's been a trading partner with Israel, and yet a Turkish newspaper aligned with Erdogan's party has suggested the Islamic world form a giant army to attack the Jewish state. And as a NATO ally of the United States, he essentially kidnapped American pastor Andrew Brunson on trumped-up spy charges and used him as a bargaining chip. He is an Islamist president with an unprecedented amount of power. After the failed July 2016 coup against him, he launched a nationwide crackdown, arresting more than 50,000 people in the armed forces, police, judiciary, education, and media. He has said he wants to raise a generation of pious Muslims and has vowed to turn the historic Hagia Sophia church and museum into a mosque again as the supreme symbol of his revival of the Ottoman Empire. And he is going to increasingly be trouble for Europe and the United States. Well, Dale, many have wondered if Turkey could one day look like the Islamic Republic of Iran. That's a good question. Uh, I don't think it would look exactly like it because Turkey has so much recent secular history. I think what Erdogan and Turkey want is to use Islam, though, to dominate the region. They, uh, they trade with Israel, but they realize that Israel is sort of the ultimate enemy and it's a way of unifying the Islamic world. And I think that you will see Turkey become increasingly hostile to Israel. 
You know, Turkey is, of course, a NATO ally, but are they a friend of the United States? It doesn't look like it. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, countries pretend that they're friends, and that's what it looks like is going on here. Turkey is in NATO, but the way Andrew Brunson was treated, Turkey's cozying up to Putin and Russia. Um, I think Turkey should be kicked out of NATO. Uh, that's my opinion, but I don't get a vote. You know, Trump's really been out on a limb all by himself. Um, on, on, you know, pulling the troops out and allowing this to happen. Do you think if Trump starts to get embarrassed because of, you know, the, the horrific video that we're starting to see, do you think he'll retaliate against Turkey? You know, we're seeing that today. Uh, we're late breaking developments uh, with his threatening Turkey with sanctions. Uh, because, I mean, who thought Turkey would, would hold up their word? They're not. And uh, this is going to get messy. And Trump may have to do something. All right, Dale Hurd, thanks so much for your insight. We appreciate it. You're Thank welcome. you. Well, President Trump is back on the campaign trail in Minnesota. He's, of course, being criticized for abandoning the U.S. Kurdish allies, but defends his decision to bring U.S. troops back from Syria. We were supposed to be in Syria for 30 days. We've now been there for 10 years. We were supposed to be in Afghanistan for a short period of time. We're now going to be there for close to 19 years. It's time to bring them home. It's time to bring them home. The president adds that Turkey and the Kurdish population have been fighting for centuries and suggests that the U.S. could mediate a deal between the two sides. Energy Secretary Rick Perry is now swept up in the impeachment inquiry against the president. House Democrats subpoenaed documents in connection with Perry's knowledge of the July 25th phone call. That's when Trump asked the Ukrainian president to look into former Vice President Joe Biden and his son's dealings in that country. Perry encouraged the president to make the call as part of efforts to help Ukraine fight corruption. He told CBN News he personally discussed Ukrainian corruption with President Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and several ambassadors. But Biden's name, he says, never came up. It's not once, as God is my witness, not once was a Biden name, not the former vice president, not his son, ever mentioned. You know, corruption was talked about uh, in the country, but it was always uh, a, a relatively uh, vague term of, you know, the oligarchs and, and this and that and what have you. Perry is expected to leave the administration by the end of this year. Well, at a recent CNN Democratic town hall debate, presidential contender Beto O'Rourke was asked, do you think religious institutions like colleges, churches and charities should lose their tax exempt status if they oppose same sex marriage? Yes. There can be no reward, no benefit, no tax break for anyone or inst any institution, any organization in America that denies the full human rights and the full civil rights of every single one of us. Three of the now 19 Democratic uh, presidential candidates have clawed their way to the top. The big gainer, Elizabeth Warren. Joe Biden is nipping at her heels. And even after a heart attack, Bernie Sanders is hot on their trail. Jenna Browder explains how the big three have pulled away from the pack. Joe Biden holds a stable lead in the latest overall polling, but Elizabeth Warren tops the former vice president in some polls. Close behind, Bernie Sanders leads the 16 other candidates in the 2020 White House run. Susan, Susan. That rallying cry helping energize this Democrat surging campaign. Pitch in two cents so everybody else gets a chance to make it. Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax of two cents on the dollar amounts to a yearly 2% tax on those making more than $50 million. And with the Massachusetts senator winning three out of four recent polls, moderate voters are taking her two cents seriously. She's kind of been the, try to be the tortoise in the race. On Faith Nation, Inside Elections editor Nathan Gonzalez said Warren's slow and steady strategy is working. It's still complicated as long as Bernie Sanders is in the race. It's complicated for her to overtake Vice President Biden, but we have a long way, we have a long way to go. Bernie Sanders has an even more aggressive tax on extreme wealth. Both are favorites among liberal voters. I just got out of the hospital a few hours ago and I'm feeling so much better. 
Days after suffering a heart attack, the 78-year-old plans to slow his campaign and is releasing a plan to ban corporate money from politics. Let's break them up. Warren wants to break up big tech giants. She says violate antitrust laws. Wall Street did not build America. Wall Street is a familiar punching bag for the candidates, and Joe Biden's perch at the top of the field relies on his appeal to blue-collar Democrats. The former VP, facing some far-left plans like Medicare for All, wants to eliminate President Trump's tax cuts. I believe there was tremendous corruption with Biden. Hearing his name mentioned almost daily because of the impeachment inquiry into a presidential phone call isn't helping. This guy, like all bullies, is a coward. He does not want to run against me. Biden calls Mr. Trump's pay-to-play allegations in Ukraine unfounded. This is not about me. It's not about my son. Democrats in the bottom tier of the race are taking advantage of Biden's Ukraine problem while still keeping their fire trained on the president. What we've got here is a walking indictment, walking in a red tie. Beyond Biden's Ukraine problem is a drop in third quarter fundraising. Right now, Sanders and Warren are pulling in the biggest piles of cash at around $25 million. Biden's $15 million draw puts him in fourth place behind Pete Buttigieg. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. Thanks, Jenna. Up next, Christian content is being censored across the Internet, but one tech company is giving them an open platform. We'll show you how. It's the new Superbook Bible app. It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Young people, millennials, are flocking to church. It's not an exaggeration to say that we love to meet them and that we love to know their stories. Come home to the Southern Gospel Station from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern Gospel favorites. CBN Southern Gospel, available now at CBNRadio.com. Superbook fans, here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Come and... Uh, sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon. It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Conservative and Christian censorship in big tech. It's a growing issue and something Congress and the White House are looking into. In the meantime, one platform wants to provide Christians a greater voice on social media. Caitlin Burke has our story. When it comes to censorship, Christian influencers complain they're being squelched on social media platforms at the same rate as Nazis and white supremacists. Just look at these examples. Pinterest blocked the pro-life group Live Action, labeling its content as pornographic. YouTube accused of restricting Christian content by classifying it as homophobic. Google recently sent this message to a military charity, indicating the word Christian was an unacceptable keyword and violated its ad policy. Plus, Twitter and Facebook are regularly accused of banning or blocking Christians for posting content they say doesn't meet their standards. It's hard to measure when that happens, right, because views are suppressed, pages are taken down, um, uh, searches are suppressed. While big tech seems set on silencing Christians, a new platform seeks to give them a voice. 
as those news alerts from all different platforms and their whistleblowers that are coming out, as those news reports increase, um, we're more dedicated than ever to creating a place, uh, a place for people to share the gospel, consume the gospel, upload the gospel. Brian Joy is the co-founder of G Faith, a Christian tech company planning a series of products for people of faith. We right now are launching a video service for for pastors around the around the globe, and our goal, our single goal is, to, is which is our trademarked uh, slogan, is to connect the kingdom and bring the gospel of Jesus Christ um, to people all over the world. Joy says his video service is different from anything else out there, specifically in the faith world. Our pastors around the globe are uploading their their best sermons, their content. Christian podcasters are doing the same, but those. Video content pieces are getting scattered across hundreds of thousands of different platforms and, and websites, and our goal is to bring that in, into one, uh, under one roof. Hollywood veteran David Hevener now produces Christian content using platforms like YouTube and Amazon to stream his programming. Hevener has more than 80,000 YouTube subscribers. It's all faith-based. Its current events matches the Book of Revelation. I deal with demonic activity, uh, deal with miracles, uh, deal with uh, even relationships. But all this stuff is now funneling through the new world of social media. And that's where things can get tricky. Probably about 40% of my videos are demonetized. I only release about 50% of what I film because I know the other 50 will get demonetized, okay? And what it is, it's adver they call it advertiser uh, unfriendly. Okay, they say that uh, uh, they the, the advertisers don't want to run ads because of the t of the topics. Hevener says, well, it's hard to pin down exactly what will be flagged. There is one recurring theme. Faith is the common thread that causes demonetization. Okay, you could take the same topic nine times out of ten. If you don't mix faith with it, it probably won't get demonetized. Hevener knew Brian Joy and his business partner were working on a new tech platform. When he learned about G Faith Video, he knew his content belonged there. As content producers like Hevener begin using G Faith Video, they're able to take advantage of cutting edge technology, like the platform's keyword or topic search. That's an especially important feature for growing audience. What reaches uh, a younger generation are clips that um, are, are clips of content that aren't long. So, if we want to reach them where they are, uh, we want we wanted to develop the technology to pull out meaningful gospel messages in 90 second to three minute clips that we could pass around the world. Now that G Faith Video is live, Joy says he and his partner have a number of new products in the pipeline. It won't be your typical app products or tech products. Uh, we're going to be hearing feedback from people uh, and, and people in, in ministry and missions and, and people uh, of youth ministry to find out what do they need, and we're going to develop those products to share the gospel. Hevener says he believes platforms like G Faith are the future, and he encourages those who have been censored by big tech to do what they have to do to keep sharing. God's given you a story. You need to tell that story and not worry about who you're going to offend. Don't worry about who you're going to try to attract. God will do all that. He's in the business. He's in that business. You've got to be honest to your story, and you've got to pour your heart out and do everything you can to tell that story. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Panama City, Florida. Thanks, Caitlin. Still ahead, we'll show you how this Bible captures the attention of children in a new way. Are you suffering from feeling tired or worn out during the day? Can you not turn off your brain at night? You are not alone. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the Sleep Doctor, and I've partnered with the Christian Broadcasting Network, and we're gonna bring you some unbelievable information that you can use tonight to get a better night's rest. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Protect Your Sleep today. If you want to be an attorney with a passion for serving people and for excellence, Regent University needs to be high on your list. Regent's award-winning law school doesn't just create lawyers. We create leaders, judges, prosecutors and defense lawyers, civil litigators, and leaders in government. My focus has been trying to really make sure we have the future leaders we need for the, the bench and the bar and for society generally. You'll learn from highly credentialed leaders who are current and former judges, distinguished scholars, and ACLJ counsel. 
so glad I chose Regent. Uh, the relationships here have been amazing. The faculty have been amazing. Not everybody's called to the same thing when they leave law school, but they're called by a God who has a purpose for their lives, and He is going to use that education to make a difference in the world. Regent will prepare you to be a purpose-driven, practice-ready lawyer. To start your rewarding law career, complete the online application, submit your transcripts, and take the law school admissions test by July. Apply today. If you want to be an attorney with a passion for serving people and for excellence, Regent University needs to be high on your list. Regent's award-winning law school doesn't just create lawyers, we create leaders, judges, prosecutors and defense lawyers, civil litigators and leaders in government. Ready to become a purpose-driven, practice-ready lawyer? To start your rewarding career, complete the online application, submit your transcripts and take the law school admissions test by July. There are plenty of different versions of the Bible to choose from, but a new one for children is unique and presented in an unusual way. As Mark Martin reports, is designed to capture the attention of children in this digital age with the greatest story ever told. But God did a miracle. He protected Daniel's friends from the fire. Not one of them was burned. So it was like worse than being in a fireplace. Brianna Jimenez is reading the Action Storybook Bible to students at this after school program in Richmond, Virginia. It contains Bible stories and is designed like a graphic novel. The creation story is the favorite of fourth grader Kimberly Rodriguez. Because it shows how God made things by just like he just spoke and then they appeared. Even as a young third grader, Didier Madrid believes reading the Bible has changed his life for the good. Um, I used to like um, say a lot of bad words and stuff with my friends. Um, we um, used to do bad stuff, like praying to people's houses and stuff. And then after like I started reading the Bible, I didn't do that no more. Hi, my name is Hannah Salesbury, and I'm an elementary teacher in Virginia in a public school. Public school teacher Hannah Salisbury says God put it on her heart to donate the Action Storybook Bible to school libraries. Her mission also includes getting the Bible in classrooms and after school programs. I started to prayer walk around our school and as I would pass every window in our school I would pray for my coworkers by name and I would pray for the students that entered the building and there was one particular day that I prayed that Jesus' name would be mentioned in the classrooms and hallways of our school. And little did I know that that prayer um, got answered in bigger ways than I could have imagined. One bigger way came in April when Salisbury launched the nonprofit organization Bibles in Schools. God really opened my eyes to realize if we have this old Bible in our school, how come we don't have a more engaging Bible that's fun, that has pictures in it? The movement has now spread to 18 counties in Virginia and seven states. Since people started donating the Bibles, Salisbury says around 125 students have checked them out from their libraries. You might be asking yourself, is a Bible even allowed on the shelves of a public school library? Or am I even allowed to donate a Bible to a public school? On our website, Salisbury urges you to know your rights and then to use them. Anybody can donate anything to their library at school. It is, uh, if they take other donations, then they have to accept the Bible donation. But the library does not have to put it on their shelf. So that's where prayer really comes in. As teachers, if you have other literature on your school shelves, you can have the Bible on your shelf. Art teacher Chelsea Joyner believes God woke her up early one morning and planted the idea to put a Bible in her classroom. I just 3 a.m. I, I can't even explain it. Like it just, you need to put one of these on your bookshelf. And I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> The Action Bible is also available in versions for middle and high school, which means Levi will be able to stay in the Word through graduation. Why do you like this Bible? Because I like to learn about God. Why do you like to learn about God? Because He's the best and the good. I like to pray like He died on a cross and take our sin oh. and come back alive. Mark Martin, CBN News, Richmond, Virginia. Hmm. Well, stay with us. There's more of CBN Newswatch straight ahead.
Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. Highlight your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible. All in one place. The CBN Bible. Available at cbn.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet, free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a Better Gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy. Here, we're committed to a heritage of rigorous scholarship dating back over a thousand years. And to a faith tradition dating back a thousand more. This is how we create a culture of inquiry where no topic is off limits. And a culture of hope. Anything's possible! It's Christian leadership. And it's changing the world for the better. It's higher learning. It's greater knowing. It's what makes us whole. It's what makes us region. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet, free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a Better Gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy. And finally, a church in Indiana paid off nearly $8 million of medical debt. It was a donation from Northview Church in Indianapolis that will help close to 6,000 families in central Indiana. Not all of the recipients are even connected to the church, and some don't even know yet that their debt was canceled. Church leaders say the beneficiaries will receive letters in the mail in the coming weeks. And boy, are they going to be excited about that. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. We hope you'll join us next time. From all of us here, have a great weekend and God bless you.